You mentioned your leg. I want to bring this up quickly because I actually uh, know someone who went through the same procedure. Oh. Uh, you were born one, one leg uh, shorter than the other, is that right? Yeah, w when I was born they were even, but as I got taller, um, my right leg just couldn't keep up for some reason. And yeah, by the time I was full grown, it was, it was almost two inches shorter than the left leg. Wow, mm. wow. So, yeah, there's, there's a procedure, I think they still do it, called the Elizaroff pr they, procedure. They still do it, and I, I know um, good friends of ours, uh, their child went through it, and it's when you hear about it, it almost sounds medieval, yeah. this procedure, but it works. Yeah. Do you want to describe it? If it's it's pretty basic. They, uh, um, it, In my case, it was my femur, so they, they, uh, they, uh, cut, they cut your femur in half, and then they screw this cage around uh, around your your leg mm -hmm. um, and into your bone. And then uh, every day you turn four screws on this cage, and it kind of separates either end of it a millimeter. So over the course of a couple months, it's separated two two inches. And and the bone the as the, it's doing the that, bone the bone's grows. kind of growing in the middle. Oh my god! Wow! But it must be. I mean, <clears throat> is that incredibly painful to turn those screws? Um. Yeah, it was, it was pretty painful. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'm. I know I asked a really stupid question, and I'll own that. But um, and I'll admit that I knew the answer. But I, I wanted you. I I just I I cannot believe, and I as I said, I know someone who went through this, and it was very successful. Uh, but I really I really felt for this young woman, and I felt for the, the parents, because I just thought I can't imagine turning those screws every day. Um, yeah, it's, it, I, yeah, I feel sad when I think about a, a little kid doing it. And I, and I saw kids at the hospital doing it same time as me, and it's, yeah, you feel bad for them. Because um, they didn't, you know, I signed up for it, I wanted to do it, I was excited. But it worked, it was successful? Well, it didn't work, as, well that's the thing, is it works a lot better for kids. Their, oh. their bones just grow. and. Uh, even for me at 25 already, the bone just wasn't filling in. So um, I had to screw it back together again oh, <laughs> and then it. start over and start stretching it. And uh, it still didn't grow. So they ended up, after a year of that, they took uh, some bone out of my hip, ground it up and, and stuck it into the space between the two halves of my femur. And then that finally took. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. That just took my breath away. That is, <laughs> no. I'm. I mean, I. I'm sorry you went through that. Uh, but my God, it just. You know. Do you want to ask him again if it was painful? Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually do. So well, you take a little aspirin. What leave? What do you do? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> I. I sorry. took a a, a wonderful. Uh, opiate called Demerol. And, oh, uh, I I had no experience with those kind of pills uh, uh, till that point, and yeah. I really came to love it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm hoping you still don't love it. <laughs> I'm hoping that I I try my best to avoid those kind of painkillers if at all possible because they're so good. <laughs> um, I do have to say, and I've been on record as saying this before, the few times in my life when I've required a professional level, major league uh, painkiller or opiate, um, I've been the happiest I've ever been yeah. in my life. And that's a <laughs> terrible thing to, and no one should do them. But I, <laughs> like I, I understood, I understood yeah. where Keith Richards and everyone was coming from, but no, terrible. And the other silver lining is the way it affected my voice so on our second record, I actually went to do the vocals when I was in the middle of this, of this procedure. And man, just something in my voice, just I can hear what I've gone through and, and the, the physical suffering, it comes out in, in this very beautiful, sad tone in my voice. Mm -hmm. And there's just, I don't think there's any other way to get that. You know, it's uh, such a cliche, the hunger artist that Great art has to come, you know, there has to be pain and everyone has their own version of that. But, um, uh, you know, and clearly I don't wish pain on anybody, but uh, something does come from this, I would think. Do you agree with that, that you get something? I mean, other than just a longer leg, you that this is somehow 
influential in your creative process or no? It depends on how you feel about that album because it, I mean, it was a big flop when it came out. Still, a lot of people don't, don't like it. You don't hear it on the radio, but for other people, it's their favorite Weezer album and there's there's something really special on it. There's, uh, I love it. And there's, I know at the time it was not considered, it was not a commercial success and critics didn't like it. I think it's been reevaluated since then. Yeah. I'm I'm a little skeptical because I feel like the only people who bother to go back and reevaluate an album from 1996 are the people who kind of already love it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd like to ask the people who gave it such bad reviews when it originally came out, hey, what do you think of it now? Yeah. It's hard to, I mean, who knows what they're doing now? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, they may not still be reviewing music. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's the other thing I learned early on is, with criticism is is uh, um, try not to hold grudges. Try not to. It just felt so destructive to me, and I don't want to have a dialogue with people who, whatever, they didn't like what I was doing in '93 and '94, and there were a lot of people who didn't. And I understand where they were coming from. Um, I just decided to keep going and. If I ran into them today, I would like to think I'd have a pleasant conversation with them, you know, and and because I, I don't want to have that. Hey, man, why didn't you like? Me Are back you thinking then? of someone specific? <laughs> 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 there's too many, actually. Okay, <laughs> there's there's too many people. I uh, um, that's weird because as a somebody who just watching your show back then, it would never have occurred to me there's people that don't like you. Well, that's sweet. Uh, well. It was generational. Um, you mean the older people? Uh, yeah, there was a, a sta- you know, and and we um, and I understood where it was coming from because I really came out of nowhere and I was very unpolished and I can see it. I can see why people would. Uh, what I loved, w- which really meant a lot to me, is very young people were completely. Uh, they were not judgmental at all. They just saw the weird stuff we were doing and thought, oh, this is for us. I, I like this, but uh, it was very uh, discordant, I think, to a whole generation, uh-huh. and, uh, and it really upset people. <laughs> and, um, and at the time, I, I hated going through that, but now it just, it's part of the story, and uh, made my peace with it. And so, um, but I know what that's, I know that situation or that feeling of you put something out there, and you know, you drop that penny down the well, and there's, you know, you don't hear the splash, you don't get the response you wanted. And uh, so, and I think it would be, it's so funny because I just think of throwing it back to you, Weezer, you bet you guys have endured for so long and done such good work. And there's so much great stuff there that you have a conversation with anybody. I don't see, you know, nobody knows or really cares how your second album was received. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Which is the way, which is really nice. Yeah. They're looking at the whole, they're looking at the body of work. 